Does enabling SAM or rebar on your graphics card improve performance? My name is Bazito, and today we are having a look at whether it's better to have AMD Smart Access Memory or Resizable Bar enabled or disabled. I made a video similar to this one last year for NVIDIA's rebar, so go ahead and check out that video as well. So we're going to have a look today at 9 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Does it help or does SAM hurt performance? Let's go ahead and find out. This guy still has unactivated Windows. I keep telling him to activate it, but he won't listen. You know what that means. <laughs> Bro, this guy locked the door again. I know how to fix this. Where's my wallet? Check out keyspan.com for cheap Windows keys. If you use coupon code BEZ50, you can get 50% off Windows licenses. And if you use code BEZ62, you can get 62% off Microsoft Office. And they also have a Microsoft Office and Windows 11 bundle. You can pay via PayPal and they have a pretty good customer support team. Check out Keyspan, linked in the description. And don't get locked in your room with Mr. Gorilla. For our system specs, we are using the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D with PBO on. It has the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 as the AIO on top of it. To test whether SAM is better off or on, we are using the ASRock RX 9070 XT Tai Chi OC. It's going to be stock. For the RAM, we have 32GB of G-Skill DDR5 6000 CL30. Our motherboard is the ASRock X870E Tai Chi Lite with, of course, SAM enabled and disabled. For the case, we have the Corsair 5000D. Power supply is a RMX 1000 watt gold power supply from Corsair. We're using Windows 10. And for the AMD drivers, with SAM disabled, we're going to be using 25.9.1, the latest drivers. And for SAM enabled, we'll be using 20. 25.1.8. All games will be tested on a 3 run average. Of course, SAM will be disabled and re enabled. Our GPU is stock on default settings and we're using the latest Windows 10 update. Let's head on to our first game. The first game we have here is Alan Wake 2 on high settings. At 1080p, we find that there is a slight difference between having SAM on and SAM off, with achieving 123 FPS for average FPS with SAM on and 87 for the 1% lows. Now in comparison to the SAM being off, we had 106 for average and 78 for 1% lows. At 1440p, there was a decent uplift of 15.8% on average FPS and the 1% lows improved by just 8.2%, so around about 5 FPS. At 4K, they're pretty much the same, honestly, with there just being a 5 FPS difference in average FPS in favor of the SAM being on, and just a 2 FPS difference in favor of the SAM being off. Overall, some decent games with SAM being on at 1080p and 1440p, but 4K, not so much. Next up is Claire Obscure Expedition 33 on Epic settings with TS. 100 and as we can see there isn't too much difference between the 1080p 1440p or 4k results the highest improvement here was just from 1080p on the 1% lows which was 9.8% in favor of SAM being on but honestly between these it's basically within margin of error on most of the results here next up we have Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on extreme settings now I'll be perfectly honest with you guys here, the results are a little bit odd. So at 1080p, we achieve 184 FPS for average FPS with SAM on, and with SAM off, we got 168. This was a 9.5% boost, but what's a bit weird here is that when SAM was off, we achieved 122 FPS for 1% lows and 80 only for when SAM was on. It gets even weirder here at 1440p. We can see that our average FPS is 136 with SAM on 
would SAM off its 124, so a 9.7% uplift, pretty much what we saw at 1080p, but at our 1% lows, at 1440p, it's in favor of SAM being on at 90 FPS and with SAM off it only being 37. This is a massive 143% increase and honestly I might need to take another look at this result because again at 4k we see something similar. Our 1% lows have a very big difference again from 19 to 36 so that's double in favor of sam being on but our average fps is around about the same so in this instance sam seems to be good for call of duty black ops 6 except for the 1080p result on one percent lows but overall it is pretty good to have it on in this game but since the results are so dramatic i might need to take another look at it cyberpunk 2077 phantom liberty is up next on high settings. Now at 1080p, we only had a small difference in favor of SAM being 7%, a small improvement, so 168 FPS on average FPS compared to 157, and the 1% lows are slightly worse with SAM on being 5 FPS less than when SAM was off. At 1440p, we see something similar again, so there's only a 6 FPS difference on average FPS in favor of SAM being on, but our 1% lows are in favor of SAM being off of just 9 FPS. At 4K, we see something similar again, being just a 2 FPS difference on average FPS, and on our 1% lows, being a difference of 11 FPS. So a decrease in performance on 1% lows at 4K being 18.6%. So it kind of hurt here a little bit, but overall pretty pleased with the results for Sam being on. F124 is up next on ultra high settings. Now we can see this is one of the titles where you actually benefit quite a bit for Sam being on. You can see at 1080p, there is an uplift of 19.3%, 166 FPS to 198 with Sam on for average FPS. And there's an 11.2% gain in 1% lows. So a nice improvement here. On 1440p, we do increase our average FPS from 148 to 170 with Sam being on, but our 1% lows took a little bit of a hit here, being 116 on Sam on and 128 with Sam off. We find at 4K, we achieve an average FPS of 106 for Sam being off and 117 for Sam being on. And our 1% lows are actually better with Sam on at 97 compared to 92 FPS with Sam off. Overall, this is a game that shows pretty well with Sam being on, in most cases being an uplift, if not very similar performance. Next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy on ultra settings with TAA high, and we can see that at 1080p, we had an average FPS improvement of 9.4%, going from 128 to 140 with Sam on. Pretty decent uplift and our 1% lows are the same here. At 1440p, we had a solid gain again of 11.2% in favor of Sam being on, and just a 4 FPS difference on the 1% low. On 4K, we can see that our average FPS improved from 76 to 85, which is a difference of 9 FPS. And our 1% lows only had a 1 FPS difference. Overall here, solid improvement for all the average FPSs, and our 1% lows were pretty much the same on all three resolutions. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered on very high settings with TAA native, we find that it's pretty much the same across all three resolutions. All results are basically within 1-2% to of each other, so not much difference on this title, to be honest with you guys. Stalker 2 is up next on epic settings with TSL 100%, and we can see at 1080p, we had very similar results with 66 FPS on Sam being off and 70 FPS with Sam being on, an improvement of 4 FPS. The 1% lows were in favor of Sam being off by 4 FPS. At 1440p, we find that there's an increase from 53 FPS on average with Sam off to 61 with Sam on. And interestingly enough, the 1% lows are actually exactly the same as they are at 1080p. At 4K, we find that we have a decent improvement, although very minor, 
from 34 FPS to 37, so just 3 FPS in favor of Sam, and 5 FPS improvement from 25 to 30 in favor of Sam for 1% lows. I reckon in Stalker 2, it probably is better to have Sam on considering we get slightly better average FPS, and our 1% lows take a minor hit, but the game is a bit difficult to run, so I guess it makes sense to have it on. Last but not least, we have The Last of Us Part 1 on Ultra setting. At 1080p, our average FPS improves by just 6 FPS in favour of Sam being on, and our 1% lows improve by 9.7% going from 103 FPS to 113 FPS with Sam on. At 1440p, the uplift is pretty marginal here. On our average FPS, from 101 FPS to 104 with Sam being on, and our 1% lows go from 84 to 91 with Sam being on. We find at 4K that there's pretty much no difference at all. 61 FPS for Sam off, and 62 for it on. 52 FPS for 1% lows, with it off and 55 for 1% lows when it's on. Having a look at all 9 games for the 1080p average FPS percentage gain and loss, with Sam on, there is an overall gain of 8.5% over not using Sam, and we can see of the 9 games, all 9 of them perform better would Sam enable. Our biggest percentage comes from F124 on 19% and our second is Alan Wake 2 on 16%. Pretty good to see that Sam enabled helped us with our average FPS at 1080p. On 1080p, 1% lows, we find a slightly different story. Five of the nine games perform better with Sam enabled. However, surprisingly, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 was our biggest outlier, being 34% slower when Sam was enabled. Stalker 2 was 11% slower, and Cyberpunk 2077 was 5% slower. We got some okay results here, but it is interesting to see that our 1% lows are slightly worse when Sam was enabled. At 1440p, we find we have an overall percentage gain of 8.85% in favor of Sam being enabled. Again, all of these games, as on 1080p average FPS, all perform better when Sam is enabled. Three titles here, Alan Wake 2, Stalker 2, and F124 were basically all the same, 15, 15, and 16 percent gains in favor for Sam. For our 1% lows at 1440p, we have something weird happening here. So Call of Duty Black Ops 6, as you can see, has a 143% gain over not having Sam enabled. This means that our 1% lows had an overall gain from these 9 games of 15.81%. Now that doesn't seem exactly right and is really really high. 5 of these 9 games performed in favor of Sam being on, but let's take away Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and make it to 8 games. We can now see that it was only 0.12% worse by using Sam over the 8 games excluding Call of Duty Black Ops 6. For 1440p overall it's good to see that our average FPS went up but our 1% lows are only slightly worse if not better if we include that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 result. Lastly we have the 4k average result and we can see that on average FPS having Sam enabled was better by 6% for our 9 games at 4K, and we can see that all 9 games performed in favor of Sam being enabled. Alan Wake 2 and Hogwarts Legacy saw a 12% bump, which is pretty good, but the bottom 5 titles did not get over a 5% gain. At 4K, we get some pretty odd results, to say the least, with an overall percentage gain on these 9 games of 10.73%. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 was 89% better on the 4K result with Sam on, Stalker 2 on 20%, and 4 of the titles performed better when Sam was off, being Cyberpunk 2077 with it being 19% slower, Alan Wake 2 6% slower, Horizon Zero Dawn 3% slower, and Clear Obscura being no difference at all. If we remove that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 89% percentage gain, we basically have the same result over the 8 games being only being a 0.89% 
gain in favor of Sam being enabled. Pretty happy with the results overall from what we've seen from these games as we can see that generally the average FPS will go up for all four resolutions. Although the 1% lows are a little bit of a different story, in some games it's slightly worse and in some other games it's a lot better. So the question is, should you be enabling SAM or rebar for your graphics card? The short answer is yes. After having a look at these 9 titles, it's pretty clear that we do benefit from having SAM enabled rather than disabled. At 1440p, we saw a massive improvement in games like Alan Wake 2, Stalker 2 and F124, all delivering around about 15-16% to 16 higher average FPS with SAM enabled. Even titles like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Hogwarts Legacy saw a double digit gain with smoother frame pacing and stronger 1% lows. At 4K, F124, Stalker 2 and Hogwarts Legacy saw decent uplifts, around about 8-11%. to 11 The Last of Us Part 1 showed only a minor boost around about 1-3%, to but still on the positive side. But then you've got Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, with Sam Herp performance dropping 1% lows by 19%. That's enough to noticeably affect gameplay and smoothness. At 1080p, this is where things get a little tricky. Some games love Sam. F124 jumped 19%, Alan Wake 2 by 16% and even Hogwarts Legacy by 9% in average FPS. But other games? Not so much. In Call of Duty Black Ops 6, enabling Sam actually tanked the 1% lows by 34%. Stalker 2 dropped by 11% and Cyberpunk 2077 saw a 5% dip in 1% lows frame rates. But at the same time, at 1080p we were still only 0.7% slower with SAM enabled for 1% lows at 1080p over these 9 games. So overall, on all resolutions for average FPS, we did see an improvement. The 1% lows were a slightly different story, staying around about the same between a 1% difference up or down being in favour of SAM being enabled or disabled. The point here is that since the 1% lows gain or loss percentage was so low, and the average FPS was all in favour of SAM being enabled, then you should have SAM enabled as a whole. The only instance I would say where you might want to disable SAM is if you're getting instability in a game and the frame times are bad, but that's really unlikely from the 9 games that we saw and had a look at. Simply put, SAM being enabled had better performance and you are more likely leaving FPS on the table if you don't use it. That about sums up the video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Do you have SAM enabled or are you going to enable it now to see if you're going to get an FPS boost? Check out WiseTech.org for some more awesome content. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!